Hello, friends, and welcome to another video. This week, I'm going to be melting one of every Halloween candy together into a single Franken candy bar. No, this is not a trick, but it might not be a treat either. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> Halloween, a truly magical time of year. There's costumes and decorations and candy. It might seem a little obvious given my year-round funereal wardrobe, but I'm a bit of a Halloween fanatic. Having been raised on a steady diet of Halloween Town Disney Channel original movies and Twilight books, and having now grown into a five foot nine literal bat, Halloween is my Super Bowl. To the point of making my husband Tyler dress up in elaborate couples costumes with me every year. And I always loved trick or treating, even though growing Growing up in Chicago, it usually meant wearing an entire outfit underneath your costume to prevent hypothermia. And even after retiring from trick-or-treating myself, I have a little brother, and my parents' house was on a decently prime trick-or-treating street, so I always got Halloween candy one way or another. But in my adult life, I have never lived in a trick-or-treating hotspot. In apartment buildings, there's no chance. For a while, we lived in a townhouse thingy, and though I did buy some candy, no trick-or-treaters came. The one year we lived in that house that did weirdly look like Jenna Marble's house, we would have gotten trick-or-treaters, except it was 2020. So now, I feel a void in my life. It's Halloween, but where is the candy? It's been years since my lips tasted the sweet nectar of a Three Musketeers, or rested upon the ridges of a candy corn. And a baby Ruth? Forget about it. And from this void spawned a horrible, terrible, no good, very bad idea. What if I, somehow, was able to combine every Halloween candy together into a single Franken candy? The one candy to rule them all, and in the darkness, satiate my desire for an entire bucket of Halloween candy in just one bite. Well, my dear friends, that is what we have gathered here today to do. All right, let's go. Okay, so we are outside of Walmart right now, and I'm gonna go in there and buy every Halloween candy I can find. Let's go. So obviously first up on our quest here was shopping time. And we decided to stop at Walmart first. Though obviously a pitfall of going Halloween candy shopping was that the Halloween decor was also out in force. Cute pumpkins, wait, nope, not now. Uh... Spooky tchotchkes are truly my shit. Oh, there are tiny trick or treat buckets. Oh, look at these. Look at these! But the video isn't called melting every Halloween decoration together, so I needed to focus. Can I have them? I promise I won't melt them into the candy. <laughs> microplastics, yum! Do you have to promise that? <laughs> I promise microplastics. <laughs> and quickly found myself in the nearby candy aisle. All right, here we are, the Halloween candy. The mother load. Now, obviously part of the problem with this experiment is that there isn't one comprehensive list of every Halloween candy out there, but we thought that seeing what big box stores were selling as trick-or-treating candy would be a good place to start. Oh, we've got some Reese's. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. Tyler, look, look at that one in the middle the Franken cup. And Walmart had a crap ton of different variety packs that contained some Halloween classics. Ooh, peanut lovers. I'm a nut lover. Amongst the staples, there were also some, in my opinion, very interesting, almost niche variety packs, like the white chocolate grab bag. I didn't know there was enough white chocolate to warrant its own bag. There's only three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> as well as some variety packs I was less excited about, like this Child's Play one, which was very centered around different variations on the Tootsie Roll. Tootsie Pops, fine, if we must. <laughs> Put the owls on it though. They got the owls off. Yep. Screw him, okay, I'm over him. <laughs> I will probably say it a few times in this video, but I'm a bit of a Tootsie hater. This is a, this is a, this is a hot take video. <laughs> <laughs> now there were some repeat candies across different bags, so we didn't grab every single one. I think I have all these. Do I have a Rolo yet? But if it was in a bag, we picked it up and added it to our list. Dude, we are gonna be the best house on the block. <laughs> <laughs> Except we aren't a house or a YouTube channel operating out of an apartment. Best apartment in the hallway, come on! <laughs> now in the rest of the Halloween section, there were a few straggler candies that hadn't made it into the variety packs. Ooh, look at this! Like autumnal Werther's, candy corn of course, pumpkin-shaped York peppermint patties. That's cute. That's novel. Generally, we decided to avoid the non-individually wrapped, non-trick-or-treating candies, like these Cadbury eggs or Pez. Yeah, okay, no. You can't just dispense Pez into Halloween bags. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, child, let me dispense a Pez into your mouth. <laughs> but if it was a specific Halloween variation on a popular candy, we grabbed it, like Orange Junior Mints and Ghost Dots, along with a couple more candies that people in our office felt really strongly should be included. And after filling up our cart to the brim, um... Now excuse me while I go ponder the fog machine. <laughs> Just looking. 
Just looking. I did do a quick decor sweep. Oh, spooky jug. Oh my God. How could you say no to that face? Yes, I did get the fog machine and the jug and some creepy fabric. And then it was time to check out. We entered with one cart and we're exiting with two. And head to our next stop, Target. Things got a little out of hand. Now, our trip to Target was mostly a double check, as after scoping out their Halloween section, it seemed that they actually had a lot of the same variety packs that Walmart did. Yeah, like, I'm looking, we already have most of that, for sure. And if not all of it. But there were a couple of specialty items that Target had that we wanted, like gummy vampire fangs and a couple of odd alternative gummy variety packs, like these gummy dill pickles and Oscar Mayer wieners. We were also, again, as fate would have it, dangerously close to the decor. Oh, oh. The bat spatula? The bachula? The bachula? It's the golden bachula. <laughs> like the bachula. <laughs> bachula nation, <laughs> checking in. And once we had gotten pretty much every candy we could find, I embraced my toxic urge to buy a lot of Halloween decorations that we did not need at all. Now walk away for one second, you have this? <laughs> I want it. <laughs> yes, I did get the stoplight. And with our giant haul acquired, it was time to head home and do some inventory. Did we buy candy here? Maybe not. <laughs> okay, so once returning from our shopping spree, we combed through our 78 different bags of candy and filtered out one of every individual sweet. Don't worry, although yes, we did end up with a lot of extra candy, anything that isn't used in this experiment will be given to team members and friends. No one in our vicinity will be buying their own Halloween candy this year. And after some serious sorting, we ended up with 233 different individual candies, which might not be every Halloween candy on the planet, but it is a lot of them. Ready? Aim, fire! Ooh, uh oh, that's a nice pile, people. So I guess the next question is, what's our plan here? Obviously, a lot of these candies have different textures and compositions, so I figured melting them all together into one blob would just produce an impossible to eat boulder of candy nonsense. We considered doing like a candy bark, like making a chocolate layer, and then maybe suspending gummy pieces throughout and drizzling hard candy on top. But I think my favorite idea, and arguably the most difficult one, was to try and make a layered Franken candy bar, with each layer being a different candy type sub Franken. So we're gonna sort our candies into five different categories to melt together separately. Hard candies, chocolate and chocolate based candy bars, caramels, Tootsie Rolls, and chewy. <laughs> Those are our categories. What's your favorite flavor? Chewy is my favorite flavor. It's actually my mom's favorite flavor. It's actually what Tyler's mom says. <laughs> the only thing that we decidedly couldn't figure out how to incorporate was the gum. It is a thing you get on Halloween for sure, but based on some preliminary testing, it does not mix with the other candies well. So we had to cut it, along with a couple other excessively chewy candies. Farewell, goodbye, nerds, gummy clusters, and bubblegum. And with that plan in mind, it was time to dive in. All right, so first up is our hard candy category, and we have 77 of these bad boys. There are a lot of lollipops in here. Yeah, this is our lollipop brigade, lollipop guild situation. Now, our process here was basically just to unwrap our candies and then melt them, which meant that my first task here was just to shuck, with the only caveat being that I had to make sure the lollipops were placed sticks up so I could pluck the sticks out as the candies started to melt. No! Once there's more candy in here, I feel like they'll work better. Okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And notably in this category, there were a lot of variations on the same products. For example, there were 16 different dum-dums, which meant that there was a wide variety of different flavors, from root beer to orange to mystery, though the most popular ones across the board were apple, watermelon, blue raspberry, and cherry. And besides our large number of lollipops, this would be a very grisly and weird setup for like a final destination death. <laughs> You'll be slowly lowered upon a bunch of lollipop sticks. <laughs> there were also a fair amount of lozenges, I guess you would call them, with four lifesavers. Ironically, as a child, I almost choked to death on a lifesaver, so. That is ironic, actually. <laughs> yeah, my uncle Heimlicked me, and then the lifesaver sh shot across the room. You've been Heimlicked before? I was Heimlicked. Wow, shit. <laughs> I was Heimlicked. That's a big deal, man. <laughs> as well as a couple of Everlasting Gobstoppers, a lemon head, and of course, 11 Jolly Ranchers. And I feel like the question was raised, like, what is a Jolly Rancher, right? Like, like why is it called Jolly Rancher? Do they mean, like, is it literal? Like a like happy a cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am a cowboy, and I am happy. 
I am a Jolly Rancher. 10 of our hard candies were also sour, giving this category a bit of a tangy edge, like with these extreme sour warheads, which to this day, I still find intimidating. I mean, if you could eat a warhead, you were pretty hardcore. I mean, it sort of established social hierarchies in third grade. It's like a flaming hot Cheeto. Yeah. It's worth a lot of social capital. <laughs> there were also a couple of hard candies that had stuff inside of them. We decided to just let the blow pops roll because they seemed to be more pop than blow, but we were concerned about the large amount of Tootsie inside the Tootsie Pops. So we attempted to hammer the Tootsie out. How many smacks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? Ready? Yeah. Oh. Okay, maybe more than one. Ha! Ah, two and a half. Suck it, owl. Am I the owl? Suck it, owl. <laughs> and we also didn't want the plastic from these ring pops to melt when we put the hard candies in the pan. Oh. That's what we're looking for, right? That's what I'm talking about. So we hammered them off as well. And with all our candies in, it was time to transfer them into our pan. So I guess I didn't have to arrange my candies in this Pyrex at all. Oh well. It looks cute. And then it was time to turn up the heat. And after a little bit, start plucking the lollipop sticks out as they started to get loose. All right, ready? <sighs> now that's awesome. And this part was great. I loved this. Oh, here we go. Big stick. Big stick coming out. Bye. I had never before considered melting lollipops, but in some ways they are more satisfying than melting lipsticks. This reminds me of when Charlie Day said, what's your hobby? Magnets? What's your hobby? Melting? Yeah, melting is my hobby, actually. Yeah, it <laughs> like it literally is. <laughs> and after plucking out our last few stubborn sticks, it was just a few flicks of the spatula until our concoction was all mixed. The smell is interesting, but not bad. The color is quite gray. <laughs> Has it regressed to molasses? <laughs> this is high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, that's what this is. We've distilled the high fructose corn syrup. Next up, we had to dole our candy out into our silicone mold, which we didn't really have an official method for besides just dollop in a few tendrils before it hardens. Looks crazy, but we're gonna go with it. Let's go! Obviously, this layer is pretty thin, which I did on purpose so we could still bite into our bar without breaking our teeth. It's like a glaze. It's like a high fructose glaze. Though that does mean that our candy bar will not be a perfectly proportional Franken, but hard candy will be present. Looking nice and coated. That's a layer. It might not look like much now, but I have faith. And after a quick taste test, mmm. Oh, I honestly thought it tasted kind of good. Initially, I taste watermelon and apple. Actually, not too bad. It looks awful. <laughs> <laughs> it looks gray. It looks diseased, zombie-ish, Halloween-y, but um, tastes pretty good. I shouldn't break a tooth now. <laughs> I should wait till later, right? And with our Franken hard candy made, it was on to our next category. Let's do it. All right. So now we're on to our chewy candy layer, which has a lot of stuff. We've got the crawlers, the rings, the teeth, the kids. We've got them all. Now, because we weren't totally sure how to melt all of these candies together in a way that would retain their chewy texture, we decided rather to chop them, blend them, and then mush them together into a sort of paste. Sophisticated stuff, I know. And my first step here was basically to prep the candies for the blender. All right, let's see, can I cut the airhead? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Yes, but it is stretchy, which for most of them meant slicing them into pretty small pieces, which, spoiler alert, is most easily done with scissors. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay, we've introduced the scissors and my life has changed forever. Should have remembered that from my time at Lofty Pursuits. Now this category had 92 total candies and they were generally divided into four different candy types. There were 31 taffies like Airheads and Laffy Taffies, potentially unpopular opinion, the banana Laffy Taffy is my favorite. That's not unpopular. Okay, that's that's, like, that's the opinion. Everyone's nodding. Okay, never mind. That's the opinion. <laughs> Hot take. As well as high chews, Tootsie Chews, a category favorite of mine, Starbursts, and the clearly inferior Now and Laters. In my opinion, and this might be upsetting, it, they're like worse Starbursts. That's a very mainstream opinion. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm very nervous about all these hot takes I'm dropping in this video. We also included 13 powdery candies in this category, like Pixie Sticks, Pop Rocks, Smarties, Warheads Powder, and of course, Fun Dip. Another controversial opinion, I like the stick better than the dip. I agree. I'm a stick man. I'm a stick man. Let me tell you something about me. I'm a stick man. I know what you're gonna say. Powder isn't chewy, but we actually found that including the powders in this category was really helpful for the blending, as they kind of act like a drying agent to make sure the other candies don't just glom onto each other in a big sticky ball, which is specifically what the 35 gummies would certainly do, as we had all the gummies in this category, from worms to bats to bears. It's grizzly. Oh, sh I didn't even mean to say that. 
<laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> to Sour Patch Kids, fangs, and even a finger. I hate the finger, actually. I actually despise the finger. I don't understand anything about it. I actually despise, I hate it. It doesn't look like a finger at all. No, it looks like a carrot. After that, we had a couple of chewy pellets like Skittles. I stopped cutting them. I just started squishing them. Yeah, like garlic. And then to end the category with a bang, we had candy corn. Now I know some people don't like candy corn, but Tyler and I do. Although we will concede, we have no idea what flavor it's even trying to be. I don't know. Corn? <laughs> I feel like it's kind of its own flavor, if you think about it. As a question, what flavor is candy corn? Let me know what you think. <laughs> Subscribe for corn. <laughs> Comment for something else. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe for corn. And then it was time for the blender. And we had to be careful here. Oh, oh, oh! Only turning on the blender for quick, short little bursts. It's not hot, but I'm feeling warmth. Because if the friction from the blades actually got hot at all, it could cause our chewy candies to just melt together. And we wanted paste, not blob. That smells crazy. <laughs> It really does. It's, what is that smell? I was gonna say, is that just like Warhead's powder? <laughs> <laughs> and in between short bursts of blending, I tried to turn over our mixture inside. Oh, what a weird texture. It's like bouncy. Though I did have to fight it a bit as it started to become a really strange, almost rubbery consistency. See, you see the bounce. Yeah. It's resisting me. You know what I mean? <laughs> kind of like Ublek or something, a non-Newtonian fluid. <laughs> <laughs> and once it was as uniform as it was gonna get, well, there you have it, folks. <laughs> I guess we're calling that good. Our plan here was to scoop out bits and then massage a decent amount into each mold. Conglomerate rock vibes. <laughs> Slowly flattening it out into something resembling a layer. Yes, I concede it looks a bit crazy. Why do I feel like I keep seeing pieces of that finger everywhere? I feel like I literally put one finger in and I've seen like a thousand little pieces of finger come out. It's kind of like a hydra. <laughs> now, obviously, since we hadn't melted this concoction together, the flavor wasn't going to be totally uniform, but our most popular flavors in this category were cherry, orange, strawberry, and apple, with a decent helping of sour. <laughs> Chewy. Oh. 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 Stop activating things. Oh. I think I liked the Franken hard candy a little bit more, but this thing wasn't too bad either. Initially, it tasted kind of bad, but then inside, it kind of tastes like a, like a citrusy Skittle, right? Skittly. Skittle-esque. And with Chewy down and in, I feel a little pop. Do you feel a little pop? There was like one pop rock that went off. It was time for us to move on to our 56 chocolate candies, which included all of our chocolate bars and chocolate-based candy bars. And for this category, our process was gonna be to dice up our candies into reasonably small chunks and then melt them into a Franken fudge. Look at me in my tiny kitchen. I'm baking you a Reese's pie. And we started this category off strong with nine different Reese's products with a number of different cups like normal, thin, white chocolate, Franken. It's the Franken cup. Which I think was basically just green as well as a number of Reese's attempts at different shapes. <laughs> Looks more like a lima bean. Wow. What shape is that, do you ask? It's a bat. And this category was really just stacked with some of the most iconic names in the candy world. Like we had all the Kit Kats, we had all the Snickers. Ooh, that cross section is clean. Yeah, that is a beautiful bar. We had the Butterfinger, we had the Mounds, we had the Almond Joy. The naked Almond Joy is pretty funny because it's just like, oh, there's the almond. Like that's the almond. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> there it is. It's the scarab from the mummy. <laughs> <laughs> but though a lot of the names of these bars are really recognizable, it's kind of hard to remember what's in each one. And they all sort of have like similar ingredients, but like one different one. Like for example, what's in a baby Ruth? Looking at the cross section, I actually don't know what's I in don't there. Know. What, what is that? What's in a baby Ruth? <laughs> Turns out it's nougat, caramel, and peanuts. Sound familiar? Because that's also a Snickers. And slightly similar to Three Musketeers, right? There's no peanut in Three Musketeers. But there is nougat. There is nougat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, you take away the peanuts from a Snickers and boom, you've got a Milky Way. And Milky Way is caramel, chocolate, and cookie? No, that's a Twix. Okay. <laughs> Milky Way is a Snickers without peanuts. Yes. Three Musketeers is a milk. It's a Snickers without caramel and peanuts. So it's just nougat. Yeah. And the payday even goes as far as removing the chocolate itself. Literally, what is that? <laughs> it's just... Bear. And that's not even considering the crispy family, like Crackle, Crunch, a freaking 100 grand, a whatchamacallit. Its brand is that no one knows what's in it. Yeah. <laughs> whatchamacallit? That one candy? Not that memorable. <laughs> At least the Rolo is round and the Heath has English toffee and Mr. Beast has some wordplay with that whole D's nuts thing. Is there anything in there? Nuts. 
Can you see them? Those nuts. Hey, they're those nuts. And after plowing through all of our bars, we also had a pumpkin-shaped York peppermint patty, a single orange junior mint, and six types of M&Ms. Peanut butter, maybe? <laughs> Splat. <laughs> What's that, fudge brownie? Which all squished in a variety of different ways. And boom, goes the dynamite. And with all of them flattened and put into our Pyrex, it was time to melt. All right, chocolates, to the salon. Just kidding, to the double boiler, let's go. Let's do this, let's go. Sorry, that was the feastable speaking through me. Now our big idea here was to heat our chopped up bits together until they were reasonably soft. All right, we're melting. And then once they were liquid enough, use a stick blender to basically blend out any large chunks to get it to more of that fudge-like texture, which we then dolloped into our candy bar molds to fill them up to the top. Here comes the glob. Hello, glob. This texture was also a bit odd. It was not molten, but not solid either. It is, once again, a very interesting consistency. We are creating new forms of matter, people. And it would kind of stick together, but it was also kind of crumbly. And because I couldn't help myself, I snuck a little taste. Wow. And honestly, this was bomb. It is a demented brownie, totally. It's not just chocolate. It is vaguely grainy in the way that like a brownie might be. Pretty good though. It's chocolate, peanuts, M&M shells, little, little crunch of M&M shells. And I got like a hint of mint. Maybe I was near the York peppermint patty. <laughs> yeah, I think I got, I got essence of York. The only thing I couldn't really taste was the abundance of nougat, but that's more of a texture than a flavor really. I like it. <laughs> okay, all right. So we're gonna let this sit for a second and then we're gonna um, enrobe. So our next step was to cover the innards we had made with chocolate, AKA enrobe. So I basically have a whole bunch of Hershey's here. Hershey's bars, mini bars, and kisses, all of which I think technically qualify as Halloween candies, right? And I'm gonna melt this into a sort of fondue pot of chocolate in which I will dip my Franken candy bars. So while our Hershey's were melting, we demolded our naked bars. That is beautiful, dude. It's okay if there's some cracks. I feel like, like we said, that's for the best for the teeth. <laughs> now this is when we have to come clean and let you guys know that we had secretly made eight Franken bars and not just four. That one looks kind of good. That one looks kind of like a sandwich. A garbage sandwich. We didn't necessarily plan on telling you guys about them because they were supposed to just be backups, but we decided that we actually wanted more chances at enrobing since it seemed like a pretty high stakes situation that I could potentially mess up. Are you ready? Yeah. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. Probably not. I don't think I'm ready for this jelly, honestly. Probably not. For the enrobing itself, we decided to roughly follow this tutorial from Kaibo Chocolates. Boom and in. Now in this video, Beverly is actually enrobing these smaller pralines to make them like truffles. So our bars were quite a bit longer than her candies. Submerge, submerge, submerge. Fork, fork, fork. And we were also using untempered chocolate, partially because we don't have one of those nice tempering machines that our friends at Eskazoo have. So our chocolate didn't flow quite as nicely as Beverly's did. Dab it off, dab it dab, off. Dab, dab. It is falling apart, but we're going. Oh yeah. Okay. All right, we're going. It's a bar, it's a bar, it's a bar. Go for the money, go for the money. But against all odds, I think we were kind of making it work. Dude, that lady's video is everything. I don't know what she's doing over there. <laughs> her and her pralines, <laughs> so they're, they're killing it. And after about bar four or five, I would even dare say I'd gotten the hang of it. Slide to the left and go. Pivot, pivot. And done. Then I forked off some of the excess chocolate onto our tray. Oh yes, it gets dripping down. Oh yeah. And even though these guys looked a little crazy, this was pretty much what we were going for. They're rustic. They're rustic Franken chocolate bars. So in robing, a check. It was time to let our bars rest. All right. So it's the next day. Our Franken candy bars have been solidifying overnight. So now it's time to take them out of the oven. Mmm, smells good. And uh, do some of our final touches. So we only had a few candies left to go in or on our bars. We have our Tootsie category and our Caramel category. Our Tootsie category was literally just a bunch of Tootsie rolls. Because Tootsie is a substance unto itself. Yeah. And our Caramel category was made up of some very chewy caramels like our Milk Duds, our Werther's Chews, and our sugar daddies and babies. I've never actually had a sugar baby. Probably shouldn't now that you have your adult teeth. <laughs> now they don't just have some backup teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the reason these hadn't gone into the bar is not because I'm a Tootsie hater. It's that their consistency is so different from the other candies that they just ruined any category they were added to. Oh God, the Tootsie are stuck. Help. 
I've tootsie it and I can't get up. So what we decided to do was to melt and then drizzle them separately on top of the bar, sort of like an artisanal garnish. Although I wouldn't necessarily recommend drizzling with tootsie in general, as it is weirdly elastic when melted. Hell yeah, man. I got one giant squirt of tootsie over there, but that's okay. An artful squirt of Tootsie. That's what we're calling that. <laughs> Caramel, on the other hand, is thankfully pretty drizzleable, so it was a little more cooperative. Zoink, zoink, zoink. Oh, it's beautiful. And with every candy now present in or on our bars. Wrapped like a mummy, potentially. Yeah, no, the mummy vibes intensify here, big time. Shrouded in caramel. I think we could finally say we had some finished Franken candy bars, people. Now that's what I'm talking about. Should we get the smoke machine out? Maybe. And after many hours of prototyping, chopping, melting, and drizzling, it was finally time to cut and taste. Oh, oh, the layers. I can feel them. Oh, a little crunch at the end. Ready? Yeah, go for it. Ta-da! Oh, sh What do you think? And from top to bottom, these things do look pretty crazy. So much blue. It's our first blue Franken. See, it's not always purple. Sometimes it's this. But I guess the next question is, do they taste as crazy as they look? Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Big crunch. Did you hear that? Yeah. So I have all 13 teeth or whatever. Oh my gosh, Chewy. <laughs> mm. Whoa. Now, in terms of statistics, though I have mentioned some of the popular flavors within the different categories as we've went, across the board, of our 233 total Halloween candies, our most popular flavors slash flavorful ingredients were chocolate with 63 appearances, cherry with 33, apple with 30, orange with 29, and then tied with 27 appearances each were caramel, strawberry, and peanut slash peanut butter. And though it itself isn't really a flavor, a whopping 31 candies were classified as sour. Eek, that's a pretty big range, and you can taste a lot of those flavors. I think it's good. I think it's good. It is Wonka-ish in that like, there are a lot of different consistencies, so things dissolve at different rates. Like the chocolate was first. The chocolate was first and powerful and dissolved fast. And then I was left with the chewy things. And I think I got a little bit of like sour worm in there. So it was kind of like a vaguely citrusy, vaguely tropical sour gummy flavor. Now we did have a couple of hodgepodge-ish layers, the chewy layer, and to a lesser degree, the franken fudge. So some bites did taste slightly different than others, but overall, I think I liked it, but I definitely needed some second opinions. Honestly, the most interesting thing was the texture. I can't tell if the texture was good or not. The initial crunch of the hard candy layer is fun. The lengthy chew at the end, I'm not so sure about. It's so chewy. <laughs> So we invited a very brave cast of characters to taste our Franken creation and help us answer our question from the beginning of the video. Is this thing a treat or some sick and twisted trick? So we asked Tyler, of course. Well, funky. Funky? Chunky. Chunky. It's just a lot. Oh. Funky chunk? As well as two of our friends at Eskazu, professional chocolate makers, Carla and Danielle, and Matt and Steph Pat of the Theorist channels, including notably Food Theory. And what is this if not a food mystery? And right off the bat, this thing was pretty divisive. Ooh. Oh. Nope. Oh, I like it. Get out of here. No, you don't. Does yeah. not. Uh, mm, mm -hmm. I'm getting like a little tartness in there. Oh. It was a trolley. That's a Skittles. Tyler liked it, but was not very descriptive. It's good. I'll take some more, please. <laughs> Eskazu was a bit taken aback by the barrage of flavors. Skittles for sure. There's I peanuts. Taste Butterfinger. I did taste the Butterfinger too. Reese's. There's mm. a pink Starburst somewhere in there. But actually ended up liking the texture. I like the texture of that. Me too. It's smooth, it's creamy, it's crunchy. It's gummy. It's chewy. As well as the blend of nuts and fruit. I don't know, it kind of works. I guess if you eat it a certain way. I mean, it's like PB&J with mm -hmm. chocolate. Um, Matt Pat absolutely hated it. It's not often that I bite into a chocolate bar and get overwhelmed with the flavor of sour, but I bit into this and it was like sour chocolate. Take another bite. No, I'm cool. No. Um, I think he thought it was blasphemous, sacrilegious, a desecration of the good name of the chocolate bar. Oh, everything about this is wrong. No. This is so wrong. No, I think this is on to something. But it was Steph Pat that came out as the Frankenbar's greatest champion. I don't actually like chocolate bars very much because it's too much chocolate. This cuts the chocolate with something that's lighter, it's sour, it's a change of texture. I think this hits the mark. I think she really just gets the Franken. What an efficient delivery method for getting me all the candy flavor I want in one bite instead of having to open like eight different things. This is awesome. 
I'm in. So there you go. It's about 70-30. For some, a trick, but others, a treat. I think a kid would freaking love, love this I thing. would love it. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I do kinda like it. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, no matter how crazy this thing tastes or not, I'm pretty proud of our handiwork here. So if you need me, I'll be munching on this thing for the next few days. But the flavor is sort of addicting. What is that? Uh, that's corn fine. syrup. <laughs> <laughs> that's finely tuned corn syrup. <laughs> that's corn syrup. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked that video, make sure to smash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Here are our short form slash social media handles, and here's our merch website. And with that, I will see you guys a next time. Should we just spray the shit out of that?